Hello guys, today we will be going over this dynamics problem from Pearson's 12th edition dynamics textbook. The problem states, determine the height h of the incline d to which the 200 kilogram roller coaster car will reach. If it is launched at b with a speed just sufficient for it to round the top of the loop at c without leaving the track, the radius of curvature at C is 25 meters. So with a problem like this, there are three scenarios we have to consider. We need to know what is happening to the car at points B, C, and D. First, let's draw a free body diagram of the car at point B. All right, so let's draw a car. Here's our car. So we have a force F that is acting on it that sets the cart into motion. The cart also has its weight acting on it. So we'll just call it MG. And it also has a normal force acting on it from the track. All right, let's just label this free body diagram B. And the cart is also moving. So that's going to be important to note. Oops. It's also moving. Now let's draw out the free body diagram of the cart at point C. So point C is at this loop over here. So here's our cart. Our cart is upside down. Now at this point, the only force that is acting on it is its weight. So we'll go ahead, draw MG, and we'll just label this free body diagram C. And, it, and it's also moving at this point too. Okay, now looking at point D, this is the very instant when the cart reaches its maximum height, right before the cart goes back down. And at this instant, the cart isn't moving. And the only force that is acting on it is its weight. So let's go ahead and draw this free body diagram. Oops. Let's make that black. Here's our cart. And the weight is the only thing acting on it. And here it is not moving. It's not moving. Oops, not moving. We'll call that free body diagram D. Okay, now that we know what is happening to the cart at each phase of the problem, we can strategically pick out points to use the work energy equations to solve for H. Alright, so let's set up the work energy equation between points B and C. So, we have the kinetic energy at B plus the potential energy at B, potential energy at B, plus the work in, minus work out, equals the kinetic energy at C, plus the potential energy at C. All right, so let's just set this to be our datum over here. All right, so we know that we said that the cart was moving at B, so we know we're going to have kinetic energy at B. But since the cart is at our datum, there's going to be no potential energy at B. There's also no work in or work out. And that we know that there's kinetic energy at C because we said that the cart was moving. And there's also potential energy at C because it is above the datum. All right, so let's finish off this work energy equation. So we have one half of the mass times the velocity at b squared that's for that kinetic energy is equal to one half times the mass times the velocity at c squared plus mass times gravity times the height that goes for here and that goes to that all right, so we know the masses cancel out because the mass stays the same. 
Now we have two unknown velocities. So we have to determine one of them to solve for the other. All right? We can actually solve for the velocity at C by using the free body diagram we drew out. All right? So let's go to our free body diagram and let's sum the forces in the y direction. So summing the forces in the y direction is equal to just mg and that is equal to mass times acceleration and in this case it's going to be acceleration in the normal direction because it's going in a loop right so masses cancel out right so we have gravity which is just 9.81 is equal to acceleration in the normal direction which is given to us by velocity squared over the radius Okay, so our radius is 25 meters, so we could put 9.81 equals velocity squared over 25 meters. And then solving for velocity, we should get velocity is equal to 15.66 meters per second. And that's going to be the velocity at C. Okay, so now that we have the velocity at C, we can use it to determine the velocity at B. Let's go back down here. So we have one half times the velocity of B squared is equal to one half times 15.66 squared plus 9.81 times the height which is given as 35 meters so times 35 all right then solving for the velocity of b we should get velocity of b is equal to 30.53 meters per second now let's do the work energy equation between points b and D. All right, so we have the kinetic energy B plus potential energy at B plus the work in minus the work out equals the kinetic energy at D plus potential energy at D. So once again, there's no work out, no work in, there's no potential energy at B. Okay, so we said that the car at point D is not moving, so we know that there will be no kinetic energy at D. But it does have potential energy since it's above this datum over here. Okay, so let's finish off this work energy equation. We've got one half times the mass times the velocity b squared is equal to m g h All right since the mass is constant throughout go ahead and can cancel those out and then we're left with one half times the velocity at b squared equals the gravity times h all right and solving for h you get h is equal to the velocity at b squared over 2g. All right, so let's just plug in what we know. It's going to be 30.53 squared over 2 times 9.81. And that is going to be equal to, oops, and that is going to be equal to 47.5 meters. All right, and that is our answer.